So everyone's just done a video on the analog pocket, but it seems like not many people have actually taken it apart. So I thought what I'd do is make a dedicated second channel video to actually completely disassembling this into all of its separate parts. Um, there's quite a few things that I failed to mention about the analog pocket and there's, to be honest with you, it was really difficult to make the main channel video on this thing because there's so much going on inside this that to put it all into one reasonably length video is very difficult. People like My Life in Gaming made an hour long video but I'm definitely not capable of a production of that scale. So yeah, I mean I'm going to just release various little second channel videos over the next few weeks to hopefully answer a bunch of questions before you fork out $220 on one of these things. So if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section down below and I'll either reply to them or make an actual dedicated video on them. So yeah, let's tear this thing down. We're gonna start off by turning it off. Okay, let's flip it over. So the back is actually meant to be quite... Where's my screwdriver? So the back of pocket is actually something that's meant to be removed quite easily if you want to access those header pins, if you're into that sort of stuff and you know what you're doing with them. Um, so for this, you're going to need a TR6 bit, a Torx bit, uh, which is labeled TR6 in my iFixit kit. So go ahead and remove the four screws. They're quite long. Um, it's easier if you actually completely remove them because this back piece comes off in a kind of a weird way. So let's uh, go ahead and remove all of these screws. Okay, and that is the final one. Okay, so this piece here kind of has to be lifted up in a bit of a sort of a hinge way. Um, so go ahead and lift up the bottom piece and then slide the front piece forwards and that will unhook it from the shell. That You can see there, there's these two little latches. They're sort of gonna have to be slid backwards, like lift it backwards towards you and then that will bring it off um, like that. I'll show you one more time on from the side view. So sort of, like that. Okay, hopefully that's helpful. There's not really a lot going on on the back piece other than the sort of mechanism for the buttons to be pressed, which is kind of cool. Right, this is the inside and it looks absolutely gorgeous. And one of the things I really rate about this is the attention to detail. So bear in mind, most people aren't going to even ever dare to open this thing. But if you're one of those developer sort of people I was referring to earlier, there's the header pins that you're gonna to need to access. But the thing that blows my mind is they've even made a plastic shell for the battery. If I go ahead and remove the battery to show you what I mean, which can be achieved like that, and you sort of slide it off, everything is black on this shell, so it is quite difficult to pick up on camera. Right, and if I just unhook the battery like so, look, you can see they've made an entire enclosure just to fit the battery. And that is really cool because it kind of means what they've done there is they've still made the inside like a user, I don't know, if you had an exposed battery there, it might look a little bit more dodgy, but the fact that they've covered it up makes it look like it's even finished internally if you if you hopefully you understand what i mean there so yeah really really cool there's the uh, void warranty sticker the moment you peeled that off that is going to void the warranty i did get some footage of me doing that so i'll put that up on the screen but once you've done that you will not be able to uh, claim any sort of warranty on this thing so please make a note of that um but yeah here's the battery so the battery is a um 4300 milliamp hour uh, 3.7 volt battery so a really nice big battery and look how easy that thing is to replace so if if you absolutely use and abuse your analog pocket and the battery starts to fail a little bit, um, you can obviously buy and replacement one of those. Uh, it won't even have to be a specific analog pocket one. There's a massive cavity here to fit any sort of battery in. So that's really, really cool. Okay, next thing is we're gonna have to remove this screw. Now, as I mentioned, this is gonna void your warranty once you've done this. So this is really not exactly a tutorial because I don't advise that you just get a pocket and take it apart. Um, if you have any issues with your pocket, be sure to contact Analog and, uh, and they should resolve it for you. But there we go, small little screw there. I saw someone saying that uh, we were told not to take it apart, like we weren't allowed to take it apart as if the inside was like not finished that we weren't allowed to show it or something, which I kind of found quite funny as well. Now, what you just saw that I did there was I sort of unhooked a small latch that's holding down this shoulder button daughter board that you can see here. There's a tiny little latch in there uh, which just clips onto the PCB. So, what you're gonna have to do then is flip it over and there's a small ribbon cable connector there. We're gonna go ahead and unhook that. There we go. And then you can just 
unhook the ribbon cable. And here is the small shoulder button piece. So again, if you start to have a failing shoulder button or something, that's a piece you're surely gonna be able to pick up again from analog or even just make yourself. It doesn't look very complicated. Um, and you can even see that on the silk screen there, I mean, the attention to detail, they've not only used a black PCB to kind of go with all their branding, but look at that, little analog logo. Okay, so the final thing to do then to get inside this is to slide this piece down. So we're gonna go ahead and do that now. I'm gonna just sort of grab onto this bottom part and slide it down. And there we have it. The back will then come off. So the really cool thing I like about this is there's no screws in here. I mean, other than the ones for the speakers and maybe a couple of other small components, the PCB will now completely lift out, which is awesome. So there's that middle sort of frame section. Again, I'm sure it would be really cool if Analog did sell these parts because over time that is gonna get scratched by sliding all your cartridges in and stuff. So I know I know this obviously will void the warranty, but if they've gone to the effort of making header pins for developers to be able to connect bits to it, it'd be cool if they can um, release some of the plastic bits as well. I mean, I know they're short on materials and whatnot at the moment, but maybe in the future. Okay, so this part is very simple to take out. There's three ribbon cables here, um, presumably one for, I don't know what that is there, um, the power button PCB, possibly. Um, you've got one here for the speaker, so go ahead and remove that. And then you've got another one up here for the other speaker. I like as well that they've used that sort of uh, individual modular design there for the speakers. So in theory, if they started sounding crap in the future, again, you could buy replacements of those. Okay, so that's it then. The motherboard will now completely lift out. Just be careful of the screen ribbon cable, which is around about here. And also there's a sort of a thermal pad up here on the larger FPGA chip. So we're gonna go ahead and pull it off. And then what you're gonna have to do is sort of sneak in a little pry tool underneath there and lift off the ribbon cable. There we go. Okay, so there's the, uh, the ribbon cable connector just there and that is gonna sort of press down. It's a Lego brick connector, so just be very, very careful with that. But there we have it, there is the inside of analog pocket. Now, there's obviously a few more pieces in here. You've got the rubber membranes, They've also cushioned the start, select, and menu button with another rubber membrane, which is sort of reminiscent of the Game Boy Advance SP. Uh, you can see those sort of small surface mount component um, switches there, which is really nice. And then you've got the bigger um, D-pad and action buttons, which is really cool to see. And as I mentioned in my main review, that's gonna give it a much more authentic sort of feel, like a, an original Game Boy, which is really smart. And uh, yeah, look at how beautiful that PCB is. I mean, my word, is that a work of art? And I love all the small little details. Like, look, they've got the analog logo just there. On the back, they've got an FPGA logo and another analog logo there. I mean, most people are never going to see that. But that there deserves to be framed. I mean, what a beautiful piece of equipment. So up here, we have the main FPGA. I'll go ahead and remove the thermal pad. Um, I did have to do that, obviously, for the video to take some footage of it and stuff. We can put that down again in a second. But yeah, so there's the main FPGA right there. And in fact, you know what? I'll zoom the camera in. So this right here is the main FPGA. And this thing costs $60. So you can begin to see just how expensive this thing is to actually manufacture. So the cool thing about this FPGA, which stands for Field Programmable Gate Array, is it's controlled by another CPU on the motherboard. And that CPU tells the analog, depending on which game is plugged in to essentially turn itself into the console. So a 1-1 one, one version. So this thing right here is the ability to become a Game Boy or a Neo Geo or an Atari Lynx or something. So how cool is that? That is a very beautiful little thing. And then you've got another FPGA right here, which is the slightly smaller one, which is gonna give the um, pocket more functionality. And also, as I mentioned in the video, that's what the developers are gonna be able to have a lot of access to, to uh, play around and create some cool stuff. So an absolutely beautiful thing. This FPGA costs $20. So already we've got 60, 70, $80 going on here. And the screen as well is another thing that's insanely expensive for them to buy. And as I mentioned in the video as well, it has 1.5 millimeters of Gorilla Glass on the screen, which is a massive amount. It's a very expensive thing to build, if I haven't made that clear already. 
So yeah, that little uh, ribbon cable there on the side is for this small daughter board which houses the sleep and wake and power button and the volume PCB as well. And uh, yeah, you can see a few more small little details in there. Absolutely beautiful. And this plastic, a lot of people have said, you know, is the quality of the plastic good? It looks cheap. Yeah, wait till you get it in your hands. It's absolutely stunning. It feels, it just feels so robust. It really does. And I'm not receiving any money. I've got no affiliation with analog in the slightest. And I've actually asked to review their products in the past and they haven't even gotten back to me. So I, I am actually a massive fan of analog. They're super, super popular. And yeah, I mean, look at this. It's just, it just goes to show what your money can actually get you with a proper company doing this. This is gorgeous. Right, let's flip it around. You can see there the cartridge uh, connector there for all the Game Boy games and stuff and all the other games that you can plug into it. On the bottom, you've got your link port, which is really cool. There's the USB-C um, connector. You've got your header pins and then also the 3.5mm um, headphone jack, which has got to be one of the smallest 3.5 millimeter headphone jacks I've ever seen. There's a micro SD card slot on the side, which is gonna be for um, all the updates and stuff that you're gonna be able to do to this thing down the line. So there we have it, we have the analog pocket teared down. We've got all the buttons, we've got the different shell pieces, we've got that front piece, the motherboard and the battery and the small daughter board for the shoulder buttons. That right there is the analog pocket teardown. I hope you've all enjoyed this video. Stay tuned for more videos on the analog pocket. Subscribe if you're new, leave a like if you enjoyed, and let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section down below. Bye.